So let's have a lesson on this work. Uh, follow the lesson for free, uh, pick up some tips, learn about the arranging process. But if you're interested, I do have a sheet music edition of this work, and there's a link for that in the description. So this is an aria from a cantata. So uh, clearly it's an arrangement for solo guitar. And let me first just tell you about how I went about making the arrangement. So the first thing I did was I, I wrote out the entire continual line. So that's the bass line. And I'm, I just wrote it out exactly as it appears in the cantata. And then what I did is I added in the, the vocal melody, wherever that occurs, and just put that in. So that's our two voice texture there. And then I added in the intro uh, flute material. And then in one other spot, I added um, a, a fragment of the flute part as well, just to, to fill out the piece. So for the most part, you're just hearing um, musical lines from the cantata. Um, I haven't added any extra notes to fill out the chords or anything like that. Um, I've kept it, you know, relatively simple in that regard, although it's quite, you know, active with the two voice writing the whole time. But I haven't, I haven't um, filled it out, um, and that allows for a, you know, a slightly more increased tempo and, and a simplicity to it that, that does sound quite, quite Baroque if you can maintain those two voices. So as I do a walkthrough of the piece, I'll point out you know, where the flute parts are and where the, the melody and where the vocal part is. But nevertheless, um, that's just important to know that that continual line is its own independent bass line. And so you could practice you know, the bass line on its own and the upper voice on its own, regardless if it's the flute line or the vocal line. On guitar, it's all just melody. So um, I think that gives you some idea about what to go for in the piece. Um, you know, being a, a, you know, flute lines and vocal lines, um, it's going to be, you know, you want to be quite legato and, and then, but just have that independent continual line, bass line going the whole time as well. In terms of the level of the piece, uh, I would have to say this is at the, the, the later intermediate level, but it could be intermediate too. It just really depends. Um, there's nothing complicated about the piece and no large chord forms to grab in the left hand. So in that regard, I kind of put the piece in like at the grade, you know, five level. So right intermediate, but there are a few stretches and, and things to deal with and it's constant two voice, you know, counterpoint here. So, so at, on, in that regard, more at the grade seven level. So, you know, mid to late intermediate is where I have to put it just because of a couple of small stretches and and the, the two-part writing so but nevertheless the tempo is slow and i think with with you know some practice you can you can get to know the piece fairly well and and get it down under your under your fingers but i'll point to a few things as i do the walkthrough so we're starting off with a closed d oh so that's the other thing i put the whole piece into d major um which just happened to work out really well in a few sections um, which in other keys I found was much more difficult. So I, I close the D at the beginning because we want to use the fourth string for other things. But then open D here for the 16th notes. So um, as you approach this section, Because we are sustaining that G, this is the first small stretch. I don't think you'll find it that difficult, but it does include a slur as well. So you have to keep that finger down. It's fairly secure because you get to lock into that shape, but nevertheless, it's, it's there. And then here's the vocal line. So that whole intro is the flutes. Uh, this stuff is is all the flutes and then at measure five we have the vocal in the upper part the vocal line now in 
measure eight here, you have two options. I've decided to finger it like this. Because this A is ringing out as the melody, I want to hold it and grab the other A up here. But really, if that stretch is too difficult for you, you don't have to do that. You can just play the second A on the third string as well. You lose a little bit of melody sustain, but really in the end, it's not that noticeable if I play it that way. You know, it just sounds like the, the, the melody's continuing or it's blending there a little bit. And you can just play the G open. So if that stretch is uncomfortable, you can just switch to that. But nevertheless, because I'm a little bit picky about the sustain of the vocal line, I reach up to the A there. This section works out incredibly well in this key because of these open strings in the bass. I've added a, a, a couple of notes in the upper voice that I've made smaller and that's because this, this is just a fragment of the flute line that would continue but we have to continue with the vocal part so these are optional and then I've put a breath mark here's the vocal line again so you could leave that that fragment of the flute part out that's why I made those notes smaller um, but but I felt like, you know, you're just going to be playing the continual line and it's all D's. It's a little bland, so I, I added that fragment of the flute line in, in starting at measure 12 there. Just take a little pause and then emphasize the vocal line. actually the, the finet when you come back to it, um, but we're going to use uh, the, the vocal line is that F sharp on top. So that's the one note in the continual line that I actually changed the note. Uh, it, in the original it's two Fs. But for harmonic reasons, I really felt like the A sharp was kind of kind of necessary there to make sense of the harmony. So I, I added that A sharp in. If you want to just play, you know, the the, the two Fs in that in that uh, beat in the second beat of measure twenty two, uh, feel free to. But uh, I, I feel like the A sharp makes better sense of the harmony. So that's the one note in the continual that I did change. Measure 23. And here we have the, the flute line again, but it's in a minor key now. vocal melody in measure 30 on the third beat so after this material it's actually the B that is the melody note 
So that top E is not the melody, so you do want to make sure that your M finger gets that, that open B string. Um, challenging um, measure there. It's not that hard, but um, you, you do have to practice it. So you can use your fourth finger as a guide afterwards to slide down to the G sharp, but it's a little bit of a stretch. And then I jump up, back down. So a little bit of an active section. It's only two voices though, so it's not that tricky, but you just have to make sure you're secure. If you can really secure your bass note, then moving the 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 fingers around a little bit for the melody is not it's not that difficult because you kind of have an anchor to work with. So just make sure you nail that first chord. And then I think you'll find the rest uh, not too difficult. fingerings there. There's a couple of special fingerings just to set up other things like using your third finger here so that you can do that trill if you wish to. Then it's DC El Fine, so you play through the piece all the way to the Fine. When you arrive at the final Fine in, in, in measure 21, on the downbeat of measure 21, you're previously going like this. Leave out the F sharp probably. I mean you can add it if you want. But I, I would just play two Ds and just have a really nice cadence there and, and sustain it. And a little bit of a riff. And just, then just the two Ds, no F sharp on top, just on the finet, just to make it a little bit more of a final cadence. And, uh, and Bach's pretty consistent about, you know, having the root of the chord in the top voice there usually. So... A very famous piece of music, and uh, I, I think that my arrangement is very, very faithful. There's a couple of places where I had to change the register of the bass line, um, just to jump up. I try to always maintain, if there's like a large descending musical line or something, I, I try to keep that intact. But at some, you know, somewhere before, I, I usually have to do some kind of octave leap, just to make sure that it all fits on the guitar. But I think it worked out really, really well in D major. Um, some of the trickiest sections actually didn't end up being too difficult. But nevertheless, um, the intermediate students will find a couple of a couple of the things a little bit tricky. Um, some of the sixteenth note passages of the, the, the flute theme, and just some a couple of small sections of counterpoint. But otherwise, I think the, the piece is uh, really worked out well. <laughs>